your average trick-or-treater would be shocked and amazed to receive anything but candy on Halloween. However, while variations of souling existed in America, candy didn't top the holiday menu until the 1930s. City leaders across the country found that giving out treats in the simple form of candy noticeably reduced vandalism and other destructive tricks. For most of its history, Halloween was a year-end harvest festival. When the Celts got the party started with their ritual of Samhain, the favorite entree was roast goose. The Celts also enjoyed a bountiful supply of freshly gathered barley, wheat, turnips, and apples. The menu changed with the arrival of Roman Catholicism. All Hallow's Eve became a fast day, that is, a day without meat. The Irish favorite, Colcunnan, made of potatoes, onions, and chopped kale or cabbage, is a Halloween recipe from this era. I've been told that a few courageous souls are still not afraid to make Halloween meals that leave out the sweets. Halloween without candy? It would take a witch's spell to make me believe that. The witch is in? Funny, I did start believing it after visiting Chez Cherie, a culinary arts center in La Crescenta, California. Happy Halloween, Jim. Tanya Petrovna teaches people like me how to make a Halloween meal that is wholesome, but still scary. What kind of witch can do that? Are you a good witch or a bad witch? I forgot to ask if she was a sandwich, but it turns out that Tanya is actually a published witch, one of the few with her very own cookbook. Tanya promised to make a Halloween meal that's more fun than candy and a meal even kids will love. We started with a bowl of apples. What we're going to do is a roadkill cobbler. And roadkill road cobbler. I was confused. All the roadkill I've ever had was an animal of some kind, but the main ingredients of Tanya's roadkill cobbler had stems, not feet. We throw in a bunch of cherries, and we're gonna make it bloody good. Oh, uh, okay. So it's really like a, bloody like, good. Like some Mack truck just pulverized just pulverize it, right? Just pulverize those right. cherries right into that apple tree. While I put the squeeze on our apples and cherries, Tanya started a batter with flour, oats, a pinch of baking soda, and cinnamon. I helped Tanya slide our roadkill into a dish. She added oil and maple syrup to the batter, then spooned it on top. I drove our dessert to the oven, then Tanya put me to work on another spooky Halloween dish. Pumpkin soup with bat's eyes, so follow me. With bat's eyes? Bat's eyes. I hope we're not collecting those bad eyes ourselves. They donate their eyes. Oh, they donate their, their eyes to products. science. Actually, the seeds from this pomegranate are going to be the bat eyes for our Halloween soup. Tanya uses seasonal ingredients like pumpkin, apples, and pomegranates to ensure that her Halloween soup is fresh and robust. Plus, when you bite down on pomegranate seeds, mm, they do crunch like eyes. Oh, yeah. To make the soup, saute some onions, sprinkle on some salt, take off your witch hat, and add some curry powder. Pour the apple and pumpkin slices into your cauldron, then add water. Top it off with coconut milk, the best way to make a witch's brew tasty without adding blood. No sooner had we sat our savory soup on the stove to simmer than Tanya announced our next dish. Transylvanian goulash, daughter. Transylvania goulash? Goulash is a spicy Hungarian stew. It takes its name from the word golias, meaning made of beef, which goulash usually is. How can we make goulash when there's not a beef in sight? Once we got the onions and garlic simmering, I found out. This is something called seitan, S-E-I-T-A-N. Seitan, not to be confused with Satan, is a kind of turbocharged bread. To make it, put your bread dough under running water and knead it until your fingers ache. Half the dough dissolves away. That's the carbohydrate part of the bread. What remains is seitan, a hunk of pure, unadulterated protein. You can flavor the seitan with herbs and spices, then bake or boil it. 
it has a dense texture like meat, and it's a source of protein like meat. In fact, it has just about everything that meat has but fur or feathers. Besides the seitan, Tanya's goulash was more or less like grandma used to make. Paprika, sauerkraut, tomatoes, and a splash of water for them to swim in. And now we're going to go to the next thing, the last thing. What is that? Hairball and gut salad. Wait, wait, the dressing gets really good. It's drool dressing. I bet grandma never made that. Tanya got me started with a bowl of diced avocado. Now you're going to mash those. Mash them? As I mashed, Tanya introduced me to microgreens, young sprouts of old friends like arugula, lettuce, and herbs. When they're all rolled out, these little salad balls will have hair made of fresh, succulent microgreens. Of course, hairy salad balls can't arrive at a dinner party unless they're properly dressed. And what would make a better dressing than drool vinaigrette? And what's going to make it the drool factor? There's some flax seeds. You can get healthy nutrients like omega-3s from eating flax seeds. But you can also get a yucky, drooly goo when you soak the seeds in water and blend them into salad dressing. Dinner was almost ready. One of my last jobs was to stay out of the way while Tanya pureed the pumpkin soup. Suddenly, as if by magic, we were eating our healthy Halloween meal. I want more bad eyes. First up, pumpkin soup with bad eyes. And can you taste a little bit of curry Ooh. in there and things? Yes, you can. Did you get that? See, and it is a nice little oh, that's twink, nice. sweet. I was really curious to try the Transylvanian goulash. Could Satan really pretend to be meat for Halloween? But that wheat stuff, it really does taste like meat. Maybe Tanya put a spell on me, but I think this wholesome feast is just as rich and tasty as any gourmet meal. I'm having a good meal. I got a hairball oh, cut. No. Oh, wait, it's a hairball salad. Having survived my brush with microgreens and avocado, it was time to sample our dessert, Roadkill Cobbler. Oh, the crust at the end is so good, isn't it? Right, the little. This is nice. This is great. I could be happy with a healthy Halloween feast every year. And to be honest, the real bad size and hairballs I usually buy have just become too expensive and hard to find. I'll Thank give you. blood to that. <laughs> but now we'll leave the hairballs behind and feast on some Halloween candy apples decked out beyond your wildest dreams.